Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. My Twitter feed, and actually my sub box as well, has been blowing up in the last few hours because of the fact that earlier today, somebody tweeted out the following. COD 2018 is Black Ops 4 and is coming to PS4, Xbox, and PC, and Switch. It's set in the modern times and is boots on the ground. The Switch version will support DLC, HD, rumble, and motion controls. The Switch version is also being ported by a company which is familiar with COD games. Now, normally, as I'm sure you guys know, I try to avoid commenting on leaks where possible because of the fact that, in my opinion, it diminishes the excitement, and I think that, for me personally, the best surprise is one that doesn't come from a leak, but comes from the developers' mouths themselves when they're ready to reveal whatever crazy thing, trailer, game, announcement, whatever it might be, viral campaign, whatever it is that they're working on, I like it to come from them first. That's my personal stance with these things, usually. Now, I'm making a video about this, and so you might think, well, that's a bit hypocritical or contrarian or whatever, Milo, and uh, I don't fault you for that. But let me explain a little bit as to why I'm actually making this video in the first place and what my thoughts are on what's going on here, okay? We haven't really had any significant rumblings about Black Ops 4, or whatever the game's going to be called, so far. To date, there's not really been anything significant. It's been pretty much limited to one posting on the Treyarch's website for a job that they were offering, essentially, that required you to have knowledge of modern military technology, which was by no means a confirmation of a modern setting or anything like that. It was just a job posting, okay? So that happened a couple of months ago. That's water under the bridge now. This is arguably the first more concrete thing that we have, but I want to explain to you why this isn't concrete by any means in a fully-fledged and hard-as-rock form, but it is something that is worth at least discussing, I suppose, a little bit now, because this is going to happen a lot more in the coming months, okay? So let's start off with the statement that it starts with in the tweet that COD 2018 is Black Ops 4. Is that going to be the case? Well, if we just believe the leaker at face value, sure. Black Ops 4 being the next COD makes perfect sense because the Black Ops series is extremely well established now. We've definitely got a lot of faith in the Black Ops series and those games have sold extremely well for Call of Duty. And so Black Ops 4 would be a natural extension of that extremely hype series. But Jason Blundell on camera as recently as when Chronicles came out has gone on record in saying that the Black Ops series is a trilogy, which is a curious statement to make, especially that late in the game in Chronicles dev. At that point, they'll have been working on that next title for at least a year, okay? Keep that in mind, and he's willing to go on record, and if this tweet is true, he's willing to go on record and be wrong. Seems a bit peculiar to me, okay? What I reckon is more likely here is that it's going to be a Black Ops 4 in spirit, but it's not going to be a continuation of the Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3 series. I think it's much more likely to be a Black Ops Declassified, or a Black Ops something, or something like that that isn't just 4, isn't just IV. And the reason for that is that Jason has also gone further on record in his interviews and said, and he's studio head, by the way, he's no longer just zombies or anything like that, and he's no longer just campaign or anything like that, campaign, campaign or anything like that. He's studio head with another two guys. So he literally is calling all of the shots for this title. And he has said that the Black Ops series is a trilogy that goes something like this. It's man versus man in the first one. So you've basically got Cold War stuff going on there, and it's all set as much as possible in that kind of real-world event style. Then Black Ops 2, we went a little bit into the future, 2025. That was man versus machine, man versus robot. And then in Black Ops 3, we had augmentations, people becoming robots, and so it almost became robots versus robots, but then also robots versus themselves, because you had this strange AI going on, and all the corruption that happened in there, and some really interesting and trippy and not very Call of Duty themes coming in to close out the trilogy. Keyword trilogy. So they went through that arc of man versus man, man versus robot, robot versus robot, and now to try and slot in a Black Ops 4 further into the future, in my opinion, wouldn't really make sense. And similarly, I don't think it would make sense for them to release Black Ops 4 
but have it set before Black Ops 3 or something like that. That would feel really strange because they did a lot of work in the, uh, what's it called? The computer, the terminal in Black Ops 3 to explain and to world build and to show the kind of bridging of how they were trying to pull material from Black Ops 2 into Black Ops 3 and how the world had evolved. And in my opinion, it would be strange to jump back into that world building that they had done and use it to kind of fashion out a new game. It would be very cool for the kind of writing of that terminal to end up being more significant, but at the same time, the writing of that terminal was not built for the entire writing of a further game to be built on it. It was built so that Black Ops 3 made sense. Like, they wouldn't have had the foresight at that time to be thinking about Black Ops 4 after also jumping in somewhere, in my opinion, okay? So, I think Black Ops 4 kind of slotting in in that kind of way doesn't necessarily make sense. I don't think that it would make sense either to go further into the future, because at that point, and especially in the context of it being boots on the ground, if this tweet is true, especially in that case, it doesn't really work. Like, further in the future means we're just going to have more robots, more AI, more craziness there. And in terms of the Black Ops universe, that chronology just isn't really something that fits, I don't think. So, what I think is much more likely is we get Black Ops Declassified, or Black Ops... Uh, Darker Truths, or some stupid name, I don't know, that's a terrible name by the way, but we get some name that is of the Black Ops universe, okay, but isn't just Black Ops 4, and that's just, I guess, a semantic point I suppose you could argue, but I'd also argue that it's an important distinction to make because of the fact that if we're going to be talking about it as Black Ops 4, which I'm still completely content to do, I still say Black Ops 4 or whatever it's going to be called in basically all my videos about it, I think that that comes with a certain assumption that it's going to be a sequel to Black Ops 3 and it's going to follow it chronologically. And I think that in sort of saying those sorts of things, there's a bit of information conveyed to the viewer or to the reader or if you're reading a tweet or something that is a little disingenuous if that's not what it's going to be. So that's the first thing I want to comment on in this video. The second thing is that we've got PS4, Xbox, PC mentioned, fine. We've also got Switch mentioned. Now, at this point, if Switch is a surprise, I don't know what rock you've been under. You can actually track the sales of all the consoles like PS2, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, the original Xbox, Xbox One. You can track all these consoles and look at how many sales they had sold through a certain number of months after launch. And what you'll find is that this many months after launch, compared to all those other consoles, this same amount of time after their launch, the Switch has sold the most which is astounding, okay? Let me just sink that in real quick by saying it again. Out of all of those consoles I just mentioned, to date, the Switch has sold at the fastest rate from its launch. It's sold through at the fastest rate, which is really quite a big deal. This is a Nintendo console in 2018 selling like crazy. And as such, okay, it would be in my opinion, a questionable move if it wasn't on Switch. Similarly, we've already had teasings of this with the Call of Duty website, even as early as just the Black Ops 3, sorry, the World War II viral campaign that they did. You could log in using, I think, your like Nintendo Store ID or something at one point. So they were clearly building in functionality to involve Nintendo alongside Sony and Microsoft in their software that they were building or their websites that they were building for their viral campaign for World War II. And World War II wasn't even on that platform, but it would make sense if they were building the technology with the foresight of saying, well, the next game's going to be on Switch, so, I mean, we might as well get the tech sorted now, right? Okay, so I don't think that it being on Switch is really news. Like, it's news, obviously, but it's not really a big deal. It's cool, but it's not something we should be surprised by, I suppose, is what I'm getting at. The next thing it says is that the Switch version will support DLC, which makes sense, I suppose, because... Uh, microtransactions make up billions and billions of dollars of Activision's yearly revenue, and so to support DLC seems to me like a pretty obvious choice for them to try and make, and uh, it's going to have HD rumble and motion controls. The Switch version is also being ported by a company which is familiar with COD games. Again, that makes sense for it to be ported by a company familiar with COD games. Treyarch did the 
I think it was at least Treyarch did the Wii version of Black Ops 1 because they did the Kino map which teased Die Rise in Black Ops 2 before it came out. And there have been a couple of other bits here and there where they have had companies like, I think at one point it was either High Moon or Beanox or something like that worked on the DS versions. I can't remember. I have to fact check that and I'll stick it up on screen maybe right now. But it makes sense for them to outsource it to a company familiar with COD. I mean, that isn't really that surprising either, right? A company familiar with the game is making the game. Cool. So... The next thing to come to in this video is uh, whether this is really a big deal. Is this like sort of the bombshell that my mentions blowing up seem to have indicated that it is? In my opinion, no, it's not. It's nice to have sort of started seeing some hype for Black Ops 4, I suppose, in the timeline. That's always good to see. And we're very much rapidly approaching the Treyarch season right now. But pardon me. To say that this is a huge leak, or that it's necessarily confirmed to specifically be Black Ops 4 right now, is, in my opinion, maybe jumping the gun just a little bit. I think that it would be safe to say that this guy seems to have some information from somewhere, but this guy also seems to have said that they were going to announce during the Super Bowl today that Treyarch was making Black Ops 4, that that announcement would be coming. He seems to have said that in his tweet replies, but that's not the case. The ad listing leaked for the Super Bowl a little while ago now, and Call of Duty's not in there, or at least Black Ops 4 is not in there. So clearly there's a disconnect there, and as such, there could well be a disconnect here as well. Now, one other thing that I want to talk about is the idea of if it didn't come to Switch, that would be more surprising to me, but also it's... Interesting to me that it says that it's coming to PC, simply because of the fact that I think that there's going to come a point when the sales of the PC versions of Call of Duty just don't kind of equate to the amount of time that they have to put into actually developing that version of the game. Like, you look, year on year, at where all the leaks come from for the DLC, for the DLC 1 Easter egg steps, for example, for World War II Zombies, for the intro and outro cutscenes, cut what I'm saying, cutscenes for every single Zombies map, pretty much, they always leak from the PC version. So clearly, no matter what any of the studios do, there's a disconnect between them making their game and them packaging it safely such that when they release it on PC, it doesn't just spoil everything for everyone else. There's clearly some difficulty there, and as such, it wouldn't surprise me if Activision stepped in and said, the losses in revenue that are being caused by all of these leaks from the security issues with our game on PC outweigh the value that we get from selling however many copies we sell on PC, especially when selling it on PC means they have to develop it on PC, which takes an entire new cohort of people to come in and make the game. There's a huge cost associated there as well. And when games are costing millions and millions and millions of dollars to produce at this point, it's no kind of easy decision to just say, yep, it has to be on PC. Black Ops 3 was on PC, obviously, and they gave us mod tools, and that kind of gave us the idea of the fact that they were looking to support the game a little longer than they might otherwise do for World War II or IW or something like that. But it wouldn't surprise me if at some point PC support was cancelled. Like, I just think that monetarily, economically, that might be a wiser decision for them. As much as I would hate that, because I love playing the game on PC because it looks so nice, and yes, the support isn't always great for it, but Treyarch certainly make an effort, so it'd be a shame to lose support for it, but it's just interesting that that is there, and that's something that I figured I would comment on in this video. Also, this is unrelated to this video in the sense that it's not related to this tweet, but I want to stick it in here because it's something I've talked about on Pat's podcast months ago. I should really go back on that sometime, but also in plenty of videos on my channel as well, and it just popped into my head, and I figured it would be worthwhile to throw in. Black Ops 4 might not have a zombies mode. Boom! There's your bombshell. Why might it not have a zombies mode? Simple, okay? Treyarch have been known to try and push the boundaries wherever possible. And they've also been known, or specifically they've also said, Jason has said, that the ending of Revelations marked a bracket, a closing bracket in our eight year long story. We're now moving into the 10th year of zombies and as such, 
wouldn't it be amazing if they said zombies isn't just a zombies mode anymore it's battle royale okay i'm getting a little silly here guys but legitimately can you just imagine for a second just going on a little tangent just imagine how amazing it would be to have a treyarch battle royale zombies competitive mode in the game like bruh please yeah i'm sure zombies will be in there i'm sure there'll be easter eggs and stuff like that but can we just think about the fact that a Battle Royale Zombies mode could be amazing, seeing as the entire community has just moved to Fortnite, like, in the last three months or something? Bring them all back by just making a BR mode, Treyarch! Like, why not? Okay, tangent over. Hopefully, I've been able to convey some ideas in this video as to why this isn't necessarily a huge leak, because nothing in here is really surprising or huge. Similarly, why nothing in here is necessarily a confirmation, seeing as this person isn't 100% by any means. They've said things that aren't necessarily the case in their tweet replies, and so why should we necessarily believe this tweet? But also, it's always good to exercise skepticism in these situations, because yes, leaks happen, and yes, in my opinion, they diminish the experience, but yes, some people also really love them, and fair enough to each their own. But it's always good to take things with a pinch of salt so you don't end up getting really excited like happened with Revelations. Please remember that, guys. That was a serious lesson that the community needed to learn there. Getting really excited over something that seemed to be teased in the code and seemed to be there and seemed to be confirmed and then just was not in the game and everyone was really disappointed. I don't want this to end up meaning that people assume the game is going to be on Switch and then it's not and people are like, well, balls, I held off buying a PS4 because I assumed I'd be able to just play it on my Switch instead or something like that. Like, I don't want anyone to be kind of, to come a cropper, I suppose, because of the discussion that's going on with this. Let's keep it healthy, let's keep it positive, and let's sort of look forward to the year that we have ahead and the year after that, and potentially the year after that. I mean, holy moly, Treyarch always do us an absolute solid with their games, but let's also try and keep it kind of smart in our discussion of things and keep it level-headed, okay? I've been Mr. Awful Waffles. Hopefully this discussion of the leak that is huge and confirmation of Black Ops 4 has been enjoyable for you guys. If it has been, then drop a like on the video and I'll fingers crossed see you next time for more discussion of things that the community are talking about with relation to Treyarch Zombies games, Treyarch games in general, and any other kind of comings and goings of World War II or anything like that as well, okay? Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.